Hello friends, welcome again. In our previous lecture, we have discussed about the conventional sources of energy. Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss about alternative or we can say non-conventional sources of energy. Why we need non-conventional sources of energy? First of all, the question is that already we are having conventional sources, but why we do need alternative conventional or non-conventional sources of energy? The answer is very simple. We know that the conventional sources at one point of time in our near, near future will get depleted. And we know one more thing. The day by day, our demand of energy is increasing. So, to complete this increasing demand of energy, we need the sources which are everlasting, which are never going to deplete it. And one more thing that they are also not going to put harmful effect on our environment. So that's why we need the sources, the alternative sources on which we can uh, shift our demand of energy. So in that, first conventional source, non-conventional source here is solar energy. We know that uh, the sunlight is very very important factor for the life on this planet because sunlight is required by plants or we can say that plants can only make their food in presence of sunlight. If sunlight is not there, plant will not be able to make their food and if plant will not make their own food, we will not get food. The other organisms which are depending on plants. Okay, all the organisms are depending directly or indirectly on plants. So solar energy is very important source of life, we can say that or we can say that a very important source of energy, which is also important for life, sustenance of life on this planet. So for in this chapter, we will look at that how solar energy can be utilized for our energy demand, for requirement of our energy demands. Okay. You know what? In India, as it is placed on the tropical region of the planet, we get direct sunlight and we get sunlight for most of the year. Okay. Like uh, just for some time period of like rainy season during that we don't get light because of the cloud that's it. But apart from this for the whole year we are getting uh, direct sunlight okay. and that you know what total amount of energy which is falling on our country from the sun in the whole year is around 5000 trillion units. The units is kilowatt hour. Okay. So 5000 trillion units are falling on our country only. It's a very, very, very large amount of energy that we are receiving, but we are not using it. Okay. So the thing is that, uh, okay, we are getting sunlight and the thing is that uh, our planet is made in such a way that it, uh, most of the light energy or we can say the energy uh, or the sun rays get reflected back also but apart from this even after reflection after absorption from the lightest particles are there clouds are there they are absorbing sunlight energy and apart from this also we are getting 5000 trillion units that's a very huge number okay but what the thing is that we are not able to use it okay second thing is that normally okay normally the Energy which is falling on our planet, on the earth, on our, on our country is around 4 to 7 kilowatt hour per square meter. Per square meter. Okay, like you are having a square of one square of sides are of one, one meter. Okay, so in this area only, one square meter, we are getting 4 to 7 kilowatt hour. It's very, very uh, large amount of energy, but the thing is that. We are not using it. Okay, I'm just repeating this thing again and again because we must think about such kind of sources. We have immense sources, but we are not using it. Second thing is that our planet is like placed in such a way. I mean, this is our planet, okay, and it is having an atmosphere around it, okay. And you know what? The sun is here, 
and sun is like here and rays are falling on our planet. Some rays are falling perpendicular to this atmospheric surface. Okay. So these rays which are falling perpendicular to the atmosphere, surface of atmosphere, I am not uh, telling that surface of earth, surface of atmosphere falling perpendicular to it, just perpendicular to it. This energy which is falling perpendicular to the surface of atmosphere is known as solar constant. Okay, that is known as solar, solar constant. Okay, so solar constant, the energy of solar constant is 1.4 kilowatt per square meter. Okay, and you know that as the, the, the radius or the periphery of this atmosphere uh, is more than the periphery of earth, so then when this sunlight will fall on the ground, more sunlight or we can say more rays will be perpendicular to the surface, the surface of earth. That's why here the energy increases, amount of energy which is falling increases. Now, let's talk about how we can use the solar energy. Okay, many of you have uh, used it by like having a magnifying glass and focusing it on some combustible material and then you see that Okay, the smoke is coming out and you feel, oh wow, it's a very magical thing. You know? So, the thing is that you are using some instrument to focus that energy on some particular place. Okay, the same way we are having an instrument here which is known as solar cooker. Okay, this is our solar cooker. So this uses the energy or you can say heat of sunlight sun and cooks food for us. What is the basic idea of this is that sun rays are falling here we have a mirror okay here we have a mirror and on this mirror sun rays fall okay and it is placed in such a way that it's the sun rays are reflected inside it inside the solar cooker. So lights are falling from here also we are also reflecting Okay, we, are, we can play, place more mirrors here, like this, one more one more mirror here, one more mirror here. Like this we can place, okay. So that all the sunlight is falling on the food, okay. Second thing is that, this is also covered by a glass, okay. So here we have a glass, like this, flat glass we are having. So glass is doing what? When the sunlight or heat is going in, because of the glass, it is trapped inside. So that more the heat, amount of heat inside this box increases. Okay. One more thing is here that this solar cooker, the box of this solar cooker is basically uh, painted black from inside. Okay. It's painted black from inside. Now why black? You know that black is, black absorbs all the colors. Okay. So it is also absorbing the light energy, the heat energy. That's why the whole thing inside it is uh, having, uh, you can say, higher temperature as compared to the environment. Right? And this thing helps in cooking food. Okay, this is just a very basic example of how we can use solar energy at our home. Nowadays, what is happening is that. Uh, more advanced versions of solar cookers are coming okay and uh, many people are using these solar uh, cells are there and these solar cells actually are used to uh, you can say that to make the water hot okay so in during winters it is generally used solar cooker can be used in winter as well as in summer and any season when sunlight is available okay in droughts or in a rainy season you cannot use it because the amount of sunlight is not sufficient to cook our food. Okay, this is one thing that we can do at our home, okay, we can cook food, etc. But if I want to use this solar energy for my mobile phone, okay, now you can, you have seen that there are many instruments in which solar cells are there. Okay, now solar cells are a very good instruments, but still they are not very efficient. Okay, Solar cells are doing what? 
they are converting this light energy you can say light energy of sunlight into electric energy okay so solar cells are doing what light to electric okay so that's a very good instrument that can convert light into electricity wow but the thing is that they are not very much efficient the amount of electricity a single solar cell is generating is generally very less second thing the process of making solar cell is little bit complicated we can say in one word or we can say it is uh, expensive okay so there are so many things but still solar cells are used okay now you can say that why if they are like expensive and these many things are there why we are used? there are certain places where we cannot take electricity directly okay like you have seen many calculators many mobile phones are there okay in these solar cells are placed and these are running because of these solar cells because they take very very infinitely small amount of energy and solar cell can uh, suffice that amount of energy but there are some places where we cannot take electricity directly there we have solar cells okay like in remote areas okay like uh, tv towers are there mobile phone towers are there okay so for these electricity is required but we cannot take electricity in some like remote area so what we do is we put a solar cell good you can say the size of solar cell as we increase the size of solar cell more amount of good amount of energy can be generated so we put a solar cell there which generates electricity for that particular uh, instrument whatever it is another thing another thing is that in the space okay, if you are sending something in space requiring electricity but we cannot like put some wire and it is mm, taking wire along with it and Uh, that we are providing electricity from here no what we are doing satellites artificial satellites are there orbiters are there okay what they are doing is they are taking energy from sunlight because they are always exposed to sun okay so if something is placed here okay so it is always exposed to the sun okay like this so they can take energy from sun you have seen that like such this kind of uh, structure is there the most of the satellites are having this kind of structure they are having like one central uh, big chunk here and then they are having like this okay this fan like structure here you see these are actually solar panels so you can see how large the size of solar panel is it is actually these are solar panels these plates and this is our satellite only these panels are larger in size than our satellite why because we need more electricity for more electricity we need larger panels and in space there is lot of space okay so we can make larger panels like this so they are taking electricity they are converting uh, solar energy uh, sunlight into electricity and they can be used but what are the basic thing which is used to make solar cells solar cells are actually using silicon silicon is a very abundant material or we can say the soil world has taken from silicon because in soil if you see the maximum amount of some element is there that is silicon okay but a good quality a standard grade of silicon is still rare which is used to make solar cells you know what electricity Uh, electricity is flow of electrons. Okay, electrons are going from one place to another place. That is electric current. Okay, silicon is what silicon is having electrons in such a way in its orbit that when sunlight falls on it, this energy is sufficient to take its electron out, and this electron is now traveling. And this electron is traveling in wires and we see current. Okay, so silicon is there, which is. The good quality of silicon is rare. Second thing, silver is used. Okay, silver is also used for making interconnections. So because of this, a uh, good quality of silicon is not as abundant as general silicon. Silver is also used in that. So solar panels become, we can say that you know, one more, one way they are become expensive. 
Another thing is that making of solar cell, procedure of manufacturing solar cell is also uh, you can say technically very expensive. So that's why solar cells are not in one way are not very much used. But yes, the government should make such policies that we can shift from here to solar energy cells. Right? Solar energy or using solar cells. Okay. Like nowadays cars are also coming. On the roof they are having a solar cell. And uh, when the sunlight falls on it, the battery is recharged and then it's moving. But if someday what happens like cloudy days there and you are going some on a long drive and then battery charges, what will happen? You will remain there. Okay. So we, these things are there, but we what we need to do is we need to solve these problems. We need to have some way of converting this energy into everlasting form. Okay. So solar cell or solar energy is one. Uh, source or we can say uh, one source of alternative energy and there are others also. So we will have a look on other sources which are alternative sources apart from solar energy in our next lecture. Till then, thank you very much.